So I want to talk about some creative vocal layering and processing techniques. Uh, I'm going to be talking about my newest tune, Astro. If you want to hear the whole thing, the link will be in the description. So let me play a little bit of the outro, and then we'll talk about it. What if we made a deal For 23 And we feel like we're going fucking fantastic so i want to talk about this in three parts uh the first part i want to talk about is these three main vocal layers then i'm going to talk about uh waves ovox then i'm going to talk about these backup vocals over here so to start off with here is my main vocal take what if we made a deal? my changes looks like a de-esser light eq light compression got some reverb nothing too special the next one is this distorted vocal? So here I've got auto-tune, uh, aggressive compression, pitch down an octave, ran it through Native Instruments guitar rig, through a distorted bass amp, all of this could be any distortion plugin or any amp sim for real. Um, it's clean up EQ, got a reverb bus. This bus is just uh, pitching it up an octave, adding some shimmer. If you listen to them together, what if we made a deal? It adds a nice texture, it adds some nice color, but it's not distracting from the main vocal. It's layered pretty low. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is this sub vox right here. So at this part in the track, uh, there's no drums, there's no bass, there's no 808, there's none of that, but I still wanted to have that low rumble in there. So in, I basically turned my voice into a sub bass. So how I did that, uh, I got auto-tune, uh, aggressive compression, pitch it down an octave, wave submarine, it's like a subharmonic uh, saturator plugin. In my EQ, I've used a high shelf, I've got rid of almost all the content above 200 hertz-ish. I really don't need it. I've got plenty in the main vocals. I've got plenty in the distorted vocals. and I've got plenty to come later. So I really just want that sub frequency down there. Let's listen to all three of these together. What if we made a deal? So it's got a really interesting tone already. But again, it's not taking away too much from the main vocal. So moving right on to Waves Ovox. Let's listen to that in solo. What if we made a so Waves Ovox is really a vocoder. But someone like me, I like it a lot because it's laid out more like a digital synth, something like Native Instruments Massive. Maybe if you're used to Serum or Absinthe, this will be easy for you to use. But when you're talking about writing chords, writing melodies for a vocoder, it can sometimes be kind of daunting because it's somewhere between a vocal instrument and a keyboard. And what I think really sets Ovox apart from other cheap vocoders is the clarity of diction. You can really understand what's being said. So I tend to put it more forward in the mix as opposed to a darker, cheaper vocoder. I might push more towards the back of the mix. So let me talk a little bit about these chords before I break into the patch. So at this point in the song, I've got this piano down here. It's an upright piano. This is what it sounds like. So throughout this whole section, that's just banging out the chords. It's all it's doing. And because of that, I sort of have the liberty to not necessarily follow the chords in the Ovox if I don't want to. So that doesn't mean I can't. Right at the beginning of this section here, I'm just outlining the chords. D major 7, A, E minor 9, but it gets a little more out there as we get to this part. Let's listen to that. So especially as I get around here, I'm really leaning into those extensions. I'm leaning into that dissonance. And the reason I want to do that with Waves Ovox is as it tries to repitch my vocals in real time, and because in nature it's such high mid kind of buzzy harmonic content, 
it creates some really nice distortion artifacts when it tries to voice a really dissonant chord. So here over this G major 7, I've got this G octave with a tritone shoved right in between it. Super dissonant leading right into this minor second right here. Let's listen to that real quick. And so in solo, it's honestly kind of distracting and not that pleasant to listen to. But in the context of the mix, which is all that matters, I think it adds an appropriate amount of tension. For 23, and we feel like we're going nowhere. All right, now we've got our chords. Let's talk about the patch. So I'm going to start from a blank template here. Pull up Waves Ovox, Factory Presets, Full Reset. So first I'm going to make sure my voice is at the track, synth to internal, and note source to MIDI. I want it to be picking up on this MIDI data here. And lastly, I want to make sure my sidechain is routed correctly. So the sidechain is going to be routed to the vocal audio that's going to be controlling these chords. For me, that's audio 2. I've named it sidechain signal. Here it is. It's just a duplicate of the main vocals, but it's muted at this time. So here is what Waves Ovox sounds like straight out the box. What if we made a so even from Factory Reset, it's got pretty good clarity of diction, but I want to emphasize that even more. So for Ovox 1, I'm going to go for a talk vox, bring up some noise, bring up the harmonics. The reason the noise and the harmonics are so important is because I want all of the content I can get in that high mid and high range. That's what's really going to make the instrument speak. I'm going to bring the oscillator around here, bring in Ovox 2. I'm going to go for the electrified sound, some more harmonics. Get that oscillator in there. I'm going to pitch this one up an octave, but I am going to mix it down. So it's just a nice compliment to Ovox 1, which is going to be the bulk of our patch here. Let's listen to that. What if we made a so we're about 80% of the way there. Uh, if you want to copy my parameters entirely, here they are. Also got some light compression, light EQ, reverb, and bust it up an octave. So last thing I want to talk about are these backup vocals right here. Let me play them in the mix. Between LA. So that is not my voice. That is Drew, J-R-U. Go check him out. Let me play that in solo. <laughs> One more time, let me play that with no effects. So it's a pretty drastic difference. Let me break down that chain real quick. So first of all, I'm running this through Native Instruments Guitar Rig again. But again, uh, any distortion, any amp sim will do the same job. Uh, brought down that high shelf I wanted to bury it a little bit. Panned it pretty hard right. Got some extra saturation with this radiator. Cleaned it up a little bit. Put a reverb straight on the track. Basic delay send. Uh, this send is adding uh, a double, an octave below, and it's also adding some R bass, which has some warmth. Here it is with and without. And this last bus I've called the Magic Bus. Uh, it's pitched up an octave, got some R bass, got some clean EQ, some slap delay, and some chorus. Here it is with and without. The human voice is one of the most versatile instruments there is, and it lends itself really well to being processed in creative and unorthodox ways. Just in the outro of this song, I processed my voice as a sub bass, as a distorted guitar, as a distorted bass, and I got away with all those things because every piece, every production choice was intentional, and they all balanced together to create a solid mix. And that's really what it's all about. Learn the rules, then break the rules, but always know why you want to break the rules, if that makes sense. But yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks for watching, I guess.